What happens when you take a 12 foot piece of Trex deck material, some one inch aluminum round tubing, some half inch flat aluminum bar, a bunch of nuts and bolts, and a very rough plan? Well, you can get this, a hanging modular shelf that can be hung from a picture rail or it can be permanently mounted on an e-wall. Hi, welcome to Repurposing with Greg Pless. Do you have a wall that could use a modular shelf? Maybe even a picture rail? Join me for this next project. I'm gonna show you how to make this exact shelf system using just a few basic supplies and tools. All right, so to build the shelf I just showed you, we're gonna begin by cutting the Trex material. Now the Trex material is great because it's made of a combination of wood and plastic resin. It has a faux grain on the top, so when painted, it has a really nice look to it. You can even leave it bare. On the bottom, it has reinforcing ribs that make it very stable. And all along the edge, on the front and on the back side, it has a half inch deep groove that you can put the aluminum bar material in to give it a very nice finished look. So we begin by cutting it, and the configuration really depends on your imagination. There's no limit, and uh, you can use mine as a template, but I think uh, you know really you want to experiment with the wall that space that you're using and choose the lengths and sizes depending on that. But uh, let's get started. All right, so now that we've got all the boards cut to length, the next step is to continue this groove that's already on the face of the Trex material and on the back around the edge so that we can put in the aluminum bar to give it a nice trimmed finished look. To do that, we're gonna use this tenoning jig. And you can buy these for your table saw for about $150 and they're absolutely uh, a necessary tool in the shop. The next step in the process is to drill a hole through the top surface, through the bottom, for the piping. To do that, we're going to start by marking it one inch from the edge and an inch and a half from the back, and then punch it, creating a little dimple for the drill bit. We're going to start by drilling an eighth inch pilot hole all the way through. Using the inch and a quarter spade bit, we're going to counter bore just down to the surface so that the collar around the pipe will sit down flat. Make sure to flip it back over and finish it so that you have the flattest surface of the board along the plate for your drill press. So as you can see, the material really machines nicely, leaving a smooth bore on both the front and the back. And if you have any shelves that are going to support other shelves, remember you need to counterbore the top so that the collar can recess and hold the tube from the top of the shelf. All right, so once all the holes are drilled, the next step is to cut the half inch bar stock into the lengths that are going to be necessary to wrap around the edges like so. So we're going to cut these and if you have something accurate enough to cut 45s, you can cut a 45 degree angle at each edge. That'll give it a nice picture frame look around it. Or you can just butt up shorter pieces to the edge and that won't look so bad either. Getting a perfect 90 degree angle requires two perfect 45 degree angles. It's not easy to do in a shop. And I'll show you some techniques that'll make that simpler. So whether you're using a hacksaw to make the initial cut or a bandsaw, the key is getting as close to a 45 degree as you can. And then we'll clean it up using a file or some type of abrasive tool. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this, but even though I have my bandsaw set up as best as I can for a perfect 45, 
there's still enough movement that when you have it up against a perfect square like this, you can see that it's not an exact 45. So we have to make it perfect by using an abrasive method, either a file or a belt sander. So what I've done here is I've set up an old tri-square against my belt sander. Now keep in mind you don't need to do this. You can just have straight edges on both sides. That'll just leave a small seam right about there and it'll be nearly invisible. So this is just an extra step. If you want to have fun, learn how to make 45s, but it's not necessary to have a beautiful end result. All right, so as you can see, you don't always have to have fancy tools to get the job done. In fact, I would hope that you're not discouraged by seeing all the tools in my shop. Uh, these have taken a lifetime to build up and you too can start to build tools. The nice thing is they last a lifetime, maybe even several lifetimes. So you can start out with a vise, a hacksaw, a hammer, a drill. You don't really need a lot to do some amazing projects. All right, so now that we have all the tubing cut to length, the next step is to drill a half inch hole in the end. And that can be a little intimidating unless you have the right tool. And in this case, that is a bullet point bit which if you notice has a small drill in the middle and then it immediately expands to a larger, uh, larger diameter. This will make it go through the pipe a lot easier and feel a lot safer. The other thing that's going to make your life easier is this V block. This mounts in your vise and allows you to center the round tube. Mark the tube a half inch from the end and mount it in your vise, or if you have found one, the V-block. Alright, so once you've drilled the hole, all you need to do is clean up the edges with a little sandpaper. So now that you've completed the wall shelf system, how do you mount it to the wall? In the version that I built, I used the existing picture rail that was in the house to simply hang the tubes on it. Not a lot of houses have picture rails anymore, so the alternative method is to use a large lag bolt and a spacer that keeps it the right distance away from the wall, which is about an inch and a half. I'll show you how to make both versions now. To make the, the nut fit inside the tube, we have to chamfer down both sides of the nut just enough on this side and this side to get it to fit inside the tube. You'll have to experiment until you get it right. You can use a, an abrasive tool like this uh, sanding belt or you can go at it with a file. So once you have the nut ground down, it'll slip inside with a little coaxing. Then you can line it up and screw in the carriage bolt. For the lag bolt version, simply use a half inch lag bolt and a tube that is fish mouthed to fit onto the other tube. So to make the fish mouth, you can use this nice one inch flap disc, or you can file it down with a round file. So as you can see, using a piece of one inch heat shrinkable tubing gives you a very nice finished look, keeping it from looking like a home built project and covering up the threads. If you recall, one of my shelves on my design had hooks on it for coats. And so I'm going to show you how to do that if that's something you desire. It's pretty simple using an off-the-shelf, over-the-door coat hook that you can find at most hardware stores. 
So if you're using four hooks like I have, we want to divide the space between the two post holes equally. All right, so once you have all the holes dimpled, we're going to drill all the way through the board using a one inch boring bit. The next step is for us to create this mortise so that the over the door coat hook will sit in flush. Right now, you can't squeeze it in, uh, but I'll show you how to make this mortise so that it'll sit down nice and flush, both on the back side and on the top. So we begin by scribing a line with a basic utility knife that's right flush to the edges of the hole. You want to do this very carefully and keep going over it until you feel like you're down about an eighth of an inch or so in depth and do it to both sides. And then you'll want to turn it over and do the same thing on the top. Trying to make a nice and straight line and then working it down to get it about an eighth of an inch deep. So I would also suggest, unless you like emergency rooms and stitches, to be extremely careful when you're doing this. Once you've got it down a little bit more than an eighth, it doesn't hurt to go deeper. It's worse to go more shallow. You want to work the top as well. We're going to come back and we're going to chip this out using a wood chisel like this. Now conveniently I have an inch wide one so that's perfect but you can use any size smaller than an inch to make this work. Now start about an eighth of an inch from the top edge and carefully chip it out. Try not to go too deep. Better to start out shallow and work your way down. So on the top section here, you can actually use your utility knife to just carefully work it down. So the end result is you get a nice groove here so that your door over the door mount hook can fit in there nice and flush to both the top and the back surfaces. All right, so that about wraps up this project. The only thing left to do is to polish the metal using standard metal polish for both the aluminum bars and for the aluminum tubes and to paint it if you want and to assemble it, of course, and the best place to do that is in your house. So I've really enjoyed this project, and I hope you did too, and that you'll join me next time on Repurposing with Greg Plast. <laughs>